Hello, good afternoon, and welcome to Memorial Park in Coldwater. We're today on WOSN. We've got a district semifinal in the Division IV baseball tournament between the Minster Wildcats and the Marion Local Flyers. I'm Garrett Seawright. Join alongside Mark Schein. We'll bring you all the action today here from Coldwater. And Mark, looking forward to a number one versus number four seeded matchup here in this district semifinal. Yeah, we are. And, of course, we have a chance to see a lot of players today, Garrett, who are all conference players in the MAC. And of those, there were three for for the uh, Marion local Flyers, there were four for Minster, and six of those seven players are just juniors. So they're young teams, but they are very talented teams. Yeah, so uh, and maybe some could argue that Marion local may be just a year ahead of schedule there with that strong junior class here in this baseball program, but going to get some valuable experience and some valuable reps here today in this district semifinal against Mac. Pitcher of the year, Louis Magado on the mound today for the Minster Wildcats. Magado, a 6-0 record, a 1.02 ERA, a strong presence on that bump for the Wildcats. He is, he struck out 52 batters in 41 in the third innings, and he's got just enough wildness to him. He can cause you problems. He's hit nine batters this year, and so you, do I dig in or don't I dig in? And that's part of the reason why that breaking ball of his is so effective. 83 degree game time temperature today. It is uh, the, the American flag. We've been monitoring the wind when the national anthem played. Everybody was staring at it. It was dead as a doornail, but now it's blowing from left to right. It has been blowing straight out at times, so something that could play a factor here today in this district semifinal as we're about to get underway as Isaac Moeller, the third baseman, will lead off today for the Marion local Flyers. We'll run down a Minster lineup here during this at-bat. Well, part of it is too, Garrett, not only is the wind pushing the ball towards right field, but right field is a sun field today. Yes. And so that's going to be a little bit of a difficult challenge out there for the right fielder and the right side of the infield, perhaps. Nary a cloud on the sky is the first pitch from Magado in for a strike on the first pitch that Isaac Moeller sees. Dylan Heitkamp behind the dish today for the Minster Wildcats. The infield, Ian Holman, Nolan Schwederman. Tyler Stevie and James Niemeyer from first to third as that pitch missed in for a ball. The left field, the outfield from left to right, Ryland Edwards, Connor Schmeezing, and Adam Rindler playing right field today for the Wildcats. The 1-1 one -one swung out and missed by Muller. Muller's had very few at-bats this season. Uh, you know, he's, only, he's hitting just 200 on the season and has had only a handful of at-bats. So he awaits the 1-2. Magado shakes off Dylan Heitkamp. Shakes him off again, and they're going to go through. Oh, that'll allow Moeller to step out of the box. Is a little bit of miscommunication here in the first top half of the no, first. You, you flash fastball. He says no. You flash and fastball. No. And, 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 well, how many pitches that guy got? <laughs> right, yeah. He must feel confident about something else. Is the one two curveball just missed on the outside corner. That was a fine pitch from Louis Magado. Big break to it. Just snapped it right off and got it on the outside part plate, but just a bit wide. Evens account at two and two here on this leadoff hitter. That pitch wide as well. Runs the count full after being up one two in the count to the 200 hitting Isaac Moeller again playing third base today for the Marion local Flyers. A payoff pitch. That one up and out of the zone and Moeller has drawn a lead-off walk. He's walked 24 batters, now 25 in his 41 in the third innings. Magado doesn't like something. He's going to go to the dugout. As he'll change his belt out. That's an odd one. I don't know if that's <laughs> superstition. If that, I'm not sure a belt can... Make a, make a whole lot of difference, but... If he comes back and throws three straight outs, <laughs> yeah, then we'll, you know, we'll yeah, know. You know what? It's, it must have worked, but he did not waste a lot of time going well, down know, that dugout. Some players have a position glove and yep. a pitching glove. So perhaps he has a his <laughs> position uh, belt on today and had to switch to his pitching belt. Well, he's got it all cinched up and ready to come back to the bump as... He'll face Ian Rindler, the shortstop, hitting 306 so far this year. Two home runs, nine RBIs. The Flyers like to run the bases. Again, Moeller's not played in many games, but he does have one stolen base on the season. Flyers have 93 stolen bases on the season. First pitch fouled back to the top of the screen on the first base side. All the offering to Rindler. Magano throws so hard, you got it. 
pick your spots if you're going to run. As that one dribbled to second base. They'll go to second with the throw. Not in time at first. Okay, Nolan Schwederman tossed to Tyler Stevie, but Isaac Moeller retired at second base, and Rindler will reach on the fielder's choice. Knocked off the lead runner. Of course, that's the key. Rindler's got 19 stolen bases on the season. That's the shortstop, so he's got some wheels over there. Here's the left-handed hitter. Hayden Peppelman, the right fielder, first team all Midwest Athletic Conference. Here's the first pitch, driven high in the air to second base where Schwederman camps under it. And quickly, Minster's retired a pair of batters. Well, he's, since he changed belts, he's thrown three pitches for three strikes. <laughs> That's true. Here comes Heitkamp. Ethan Heitkamp, the catcher, another first team all Midwest Athletic Conference performer, another junior for the Flyers, hitting 320. That bender just missed off the side of the plate. The first batter that Magado did not deliver a first pitch strike to. The fourth batter of the inning for the Flyers. Fastball missed down and in. And runs the count to 2-0. Ethan Heitkamp, three home runs on the year for Mary Local to lead the Flyers. 12 RBI on the year as well. So he waits the 2-0. That one foul back. Never got over the screen. The winner gets either Fort Recovery or Parkway on a Friday night here at 6 o'clock. Yeah, the old Mac, all Mac yeah. district and really the darn near the entire conference. Mark's still playing baseball here in the district. Seven of the ten teams. And two of them that are not playing lost to Parkway, who, right. who is a member of the Mac. The 2-1 from Magano will throw over. Instead, it gets to the first base screen. Taken off is Ian Rindler. He'll stand up at second base. All the wild throw from Magano. And the Flyers with a runner in scoring position with two down here in the first. He had a pretty good lead, but the pitch where his throw was in the dirt and unable to make the play was Holman. So now the runner in scoring position with a two and one count. The catcher, Ethan Heitkamp, steps back in the right-handed batter's box. That's a 2-1 count, two down. As Magado comes playward. That one into the left-handed batter's box. Runs the count to 3-1 now. As Bryant Meyer stands on the on-deck circle, hoping to take some cuts here on the top half of the first. Magado will check the runner back at second, come playward. Missed his, oh, got it in for a strike to run the count full. 3-2. Just got the outside corner. He did caught the outside corner. The, the hitter, Heitkamp, was headed to first base, but come on back. Magano comes set, plateward. That one strongly driven down the first base line. Will it get out of play? It will. So Ethan Heitkamp lives to fight another day. Difficult spot, a little bit too far to run for both Holman and Rindler to get to the ball down the right field line. Is a big ballpark here. It 335 is. to left, 380 to center, 315 down the right field line. Magado gets the baseball back. And a terrace in right center it goes from 348 to 380 out there, but there's a terrace out there by the batting eye, batting screen too. The 3-2 pitch, two down here on the bottom, top of the first. Runner on second base is now Heitkamp will step out of the box just as Magadol is about to deliver the pitch. He'll stare in one more time. Get the signals from Dylan Heitkamp and come plateward. Missed just off the side of the plate. And the Wildcats, or the Flyers, I beg your pardon, have drawn their second walk of the first inning. Heitkamp had 12 RBIs. You kind of pitched carefully to him, I felt. That brings up the left-handed hitter, Bryant Meyer, the left fielder today for Marion Local, with two runners on. He'll swing at the first pitch he sees. Fouled back into the glove of Dylan Heitkamp. That pitch was by him. He was overpowered with that fastball. Rindler at second. Driven high in the air. Walking over the third baseline, James Niemeyer will make the catch 
to retire the Flyers. They get two on, can't get anybody in. We'll go to the bottom half of the Wildcats getting their first crack at the plate when we return here on WOSN. High School Baseball tonight brought to you by Burke Petroleum, now offering propane for residential, farm, commercial, and industrial users. Burke Petroleum. Dependable, available, 800-776-3097. Dylan Heitkamp, Tyler Stevie, James Niemeyer do up for the Minster Wildcats. Here is their first appearance at the plate. They'll be facing Parker Hess on the hill for the Marion local Flyers. Parker Hess, 5-3 on the season. His ERA is a sparkling 1.03. A couple of unearned runs have hurt him on this season. 34 hits in 47 and two-thirds innings, 12 walks, and 63 strikeouts in 47 and two-thirds innings. High camp, the catcher leading off for Minster, 288 hitter. As the Flyers will give you their defensive alignment here after the first pitch from Hess. He missed up and out of the zone on his first offering. Colton Orange playing first base today. Damon Kramer at second. Ian Riddler at short. Isaac Moeller. Playing third base with Ethan Heitkamp behind the dish as he awaits the 1-0 pitch from Parker Hess. That one in for a strike. The outfield from left to right, Bryant Meyer, Griffin Bruns, and Hayden Peppelman playing right field today for the blue and gold. The 1-1 pitch. Just a little low. Yes, Dylan Heitkamp. Awaits the 2-1 pitch. Hess comes plateward. That one foul back. Parker Hess also a first team all MAC player this year as a junior. And he'll lead off the top of the second inning. When the Flyers come back to bat. Swing and a miss on the fastball. Up at the chest. I can't goes down. On the first strikeout from Hess. Strikeout tonight brought to you by Holman's Insurance, your trusted local insurance specialist. Members of the Wayne Insurance Group with two locations to serve you in Chickasaw and Versailles. Tyler Stevie now steps in the box. Swings and misses at the offering from Hess. He's keeping the ball in the inside part of the plate. That's how he got the first strikeout. That pitch was in under the fist. The 0-1. Breaking ball in for a strike. And then you snap off a breaking ball on the outside part of the plate. An 0-2 count quickly. Parker Hess looks sharp today. To Tyler Stevie. Back to back. Holman's insurance strikeouts to start the game off. For Parker Hess. And quickly, number three hitter James Niemeyer up to the plate. These two teams played back in early April in Midwest Athletic Conference play. Minster got the best of Marion Lovell in a 6-3 ball game. As Niemeyer hitting 356 on a year. Dribbles one back up the middle and he'll get the first base knock for their squad here today in this Division IV district semifinal. Hess just couldn't quite get his glove down in time with his follow through and his wind up and his, his pitch. So Niemeyer goes after the first ball and gets the first hit of the game. Helps the average out of 356 hitter. Brings up Adam Riddler, who's got an even higher average, 440. For the left-handed hitting right fielder. And 19 RBI. The first pitch. Bouncer to short. He'll make the strong throw across the diamond. Not in time. Airmails it. Niemeyer will trot to third. Riddler goes to second. The Throw Ooh. goes as well. Niemeyer comes around to score. Wow. So after getting the base knock, Niemeyer, the beneficiary of an error by the Marion Local D, comes all the way around to score. It's one nothing Wildcats on the Wayne's Famous Recipe Chicken scoreboard. They scored, scored that a hit and then an error that allowed the run to score. I think that was pretty good looking. Had it beat out and it yeah. was high. But then that throw went to second base and that opened up the opportunity for the run to score in the position of James Niemeyer. 29th run scored this season for that young man. And Ian Rindler uncorked one from shortstop and that ball went to the first base screen. He ball comes to second base as that one fouled off the handle of the back. 
by Ian Holm on the first baseman for Minster. There's some room here between the uh, the baselines and the dugout and the, the uh, uh, fence down the each field uh, side of the field. So there's a lot of room if you overthrow the ball. The 1-1 pitch. Missed outside. Throw goes down to second base. Not in time. We'll get to center field. And Riddler will scamper to third. That throw also not in time. Blocked, however, at third base. And now Riddler 90 feet away from score. Wow. He had a chance to, to make a throw. The runner was off the bag a little bit down there at the second base. Had a chance to get Rindler, but when the throw went in the dirt, skipped the center field, he was able to scamper over to third base. Two down here in the bottom of the first. Minster already with one aboard. On the Lee Samus recipe chicken scoreboard. That fouls back to the screen. Evens account at two apiece. Deuce is wild here in the first. Two balls, two strikes, two outs. As Ian Holman, the first baseman. 19 RBIs on the year. Would love to make it 20. It's the 2 2. Pop back to the parking lot. Fought off the offering from Parker Hess. Two good baseball teams here in the district semi, and yet we've got three errors between the yeah. two of them here. We haven't got out of the first inning yet. Hess comes set. The 2 2. Breaking ball never broke at the eye level of Holman. Dropped down sidearm a little bit and it just spun out there. Holman steps in one more time. Payoff pitch. Fouled off one more time, battling with Parker Hess. He'd thrown eight pitches through the first two batters. He's thrown nine since then. We mentioned, yeah. looking at Parker Hess, that unearned runs had been a bit of a, a challenge for Mary Local. And see it here in the bottom of the first. And swings and misses as he strikes out all three Wildcats to get out in the bottom of the first inning. Gets out of a little bit of a jam. Minster plates one in the bottom of the first. And we'll go to the top of the second with the Wildcats. And there's a one nothing lead here on WOSN. Tonight's Mary Local Premier Sponsor is OPAC and Osgood for all your industrial painting, standing, and assembly needs. Call OPAC. Flyers surrender one in the bottom of the first, and Parker Hess will look to help his own cause here on the top of the second. As the pitcher, first team all Midwest Athletic Conference performer, hitting 176 on a year, has a home running 10 RBIs to his credit. He'll step in the right hand batter's box to face Louis Magado, who walked a pair of batters in the top of the first inning, but able to get out of the jam with the help of his friends behind him. Through 18 pitches in the opening inning, 10 of them for strikes. First pitch, Hess sees he'll take a swing and a miss at. Magado working quickly, coming back to the plate. Curveball in for a strike at the belt. So quickly an 0-2 count to Hess. One well, of the finer pitchers in the Midwest Athletic Conference. That one driven into right field. And a great play made by Adam Riller to get the glove in front of the eyes. High skies today in cold water and a tough sun to deal with, but no problem for Riddler. And F9 of the scorebooks is Parker S. He is retired. Played that really well. The wind pushed him back just a little bit, but he had a bead on it all the way. And that sun field, you said you used the glove to shield? Designated hitter Isaac Bullenkamp steps in the box, watches the first pitch in for a strike from Magado. Bullenkamp hitting today for first baseman Colton Arns. Curveball bounced to second base as Noah Schwederman will make the play and make the easy throw to first to Ian Holman for the 4 3 put out. And not to speak too quickly, but after throwing 18 pitches there in the first inning, Magado rolling here in the top of the second. He's thrown five pitches and all of them in for strikes. David Kramer, the second baseman. Awaits the first pitch, swings and misses out. Kramer not the highest batting average, but does have eight RBIs to his credit. Hitting in that eight hole, the second baseman for Marion Local today. 
the old one. That went in for a strike as well as Magano has found the zone after walking a pair in the top half of the first. Top of the zone on the outside corner. The 0 2. Curveball driven into the alley in right center field. That'll be a double for Kramer. And that's to turn it on a little bit quicker there at the yeah. end. It'll slide into second base. But that's the first base hit of the day for Mary Local. Saw the contact and the ball was played well by Rindler. Hit the cutoff man, had a shot at him at second base, but the, just turned the wheels on that time, did Kramer, and get into second base with a double. Number nine hitter, center fielder Griffin Brun steps to the plate now with a runner in scoring position for the second consecutive inning for the Flyers. This Magado will check the runner. Come play where it missed high. So Brun's tracked it all the way here. That's the first batter he has faced today has not had a first pitch strike. That one fouled right back to the screen. He evens the count at one apiece. Bruns came into today with four RBIs on the season. And looks to make it five. As Kramer given the windmill at third base. The play, oh, he retreated. Now thinking about coming towards the plate, will go back to third. Bruns will go to second on the throw. And runners in scoring position as Kramer originally had gotten the windmill and rounded third base and put the brakes on instead. A good throw would have got him, but the throw was offline, and because of that, it allowed the hitter, Bruns, to get to second base. And that brings up the top of the order once more as Isaac Moeller, the third baseman, walked his first time. It's Magno. Looks at the runner at third, comes Blightward. Swing and a miss on the first offering to Mulder. Hitting exactly 200 on this season. He is the leadoff batter for Marion Local. Two runners in scoring position. That one behind, bounced strongly off the backstop. And Kramer will score to even the game at one apiece. Wild pitch brings him in. That one was a curveball. He tried to snap off and just flat got away from him. And so, Marion Local evens the scoring at one apiece on the Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken scoreboard. Evens the count at 1-1. And now another runner at third base is Griffin Bruns. The center fielder takes his lead. Magado will lean in, get the signals from Dylan Eichen. Missed just off the plate. Runs the count to 2-1. Marion Local trying to put together a little two-out rally here in the top of the second inning. Magado. That one driven right back to the screen. So almost, his <laughs> molar almost walked into it and coming, <laughs> coming off hard from that backstop. That was an important run, I think, for Marion Local against the top pitcher in the conference to get it tied at one chance to go ahead here too. The 2-2. Two, two. two down, top of the second. Missed. Runs the count full to the leadoff hitter for the Marion Local Flyers. Isaac Moeller as Griffin Bruns stands at third base. Magano, the 3-2. Missed outside. Walked his third batter, second time Moeller is reached via the free pass. And that brings up Ian Rindler. So runners on the corners for the 300 hitting Rindler. Grounded into a fielder's choice. He's got nine RBIs on the season. First pitch to Riddler, missed wide, down a little bit as well. Two down here in the top of the second inning. The 1 0 to Ian Riddler. Runner going for second. Got it. Yes, they did. Got him Good stealing. Throw. A strong throw from Dylan Eikamp. Isaac Moeller retired, caught stealing. Ends the rally. 
Flyers plate one, even the score at one apiece. Here as we go to the bottom half of the second, here on WOSN. This Division Four District Semifinal tonight brought to you by Burke Petroleum, now offering propane for residential, farm, commercial, and industrial users. Burke Petroleum, dependable, available. 800-776-3097. Bottom of the second inning. This Louis Magano steps in the box. And the first pitch from Parker has driven down the first base side. And that hit somebody's car. And that might get a second car. It'll be impressive. Did it miss that bus? Because we were taking. It did miss the bus. We were taking odds on uh, over and under how many bus winners it get broke. There are two buses down the first base side. Curveball. Magado trying to lop one off the top of the bus now. Got it on the baseball court instead. It's an 0-2 count. In the opening inning, Parker has threw 18 pitches, 13 of them for strikes. Magado trying to set the table for his own cause here at the bottom of the second. Awaits the 0-2. Driven down the third baseline, right over the top of the bag, and a base knock for Louis Magado. The second third base hit of the day for the Minster Wildcats. Magadado has three stolen bases on the season. Of course, the question is, do you want your pitcher running on an 83-degree day? That'll bring up Alex Schmidtmeyer, the DH, hitting 340. And they flash the bunt. Pitch out of the zone for a ball. Schmidtmeyer, a little pop in the bat. 12 RBIs on the season. Let's see, he waits the 1-0 from Parker Hess. He will get it down the first baseline and rolls foul on him as it's touched by Colton Arns. You like to keep the fastball high when you're in a bunting situation so the batter can't get the head of the bat on top of the ball and drop it into the grass. That time he had a high fastball and pushed it down the first baseline. He'll stare at Minster bench boss Mike West down the third baseline, get further instructions. Schmidtmeyer watching intently. A 1-1 pitch. Magadon takes his lead at first. He'll throw over. Not in time. He was leaning, though. He was trying to get a bigger lead at the same time that Hess threw the ball over. The 1-1. Did not offer at it. Not in the zone. Oh, it's a 2-1 count now. Schmidtmeyer. Good, good plate discipline, I was gonna Garrett, say. because that was the type of pitch you want to bunt. A breaking ball down in the zone, you can lay the head of the bat right on, but it's out of the strike zone, so they took a ball. 2-1. Nobody down here at the bottom of the second. He will drop it down in the perfect spot. Hess does a great job fielding his position. Tosses over to Arns for the out, but Magado now stands on second base after the sacrifice bunt. Really well done. Got the ball where the pitcher had to go get it. Easy uh, second base move for Magado. And now you've set the table for Ryland Edwards. Edwards, 14 RBIs on the year. From that left field spot, hitting in the number eight hole tonight. As Hess comes playward, missed off the corner of the plate. Menster tries to manufacture another run like they did back in the first inning. James Niemeyer reached on a single and came all the way around to score. After an error, Hess puts one right on the dot to even a count at one apiece. The number nine hitter, Connor Schmiesing, is up next, but he's a 351 hitter in the nine hole with 12 RBIs, too. The 1 1 bender from Hess just missed. He has had trouble getting his curveball over for a strike. Taking his time on the rubber. Checks Magano a second, comes Plateward. Fastball. Chopped his second. Damon Kramer will make the throw over to first for the fourth three put out. And Magano advances to third. Bringing up Connor Schmeezing. Center fielder. 
Lark's had 351 for average this year. Something a lot of coaches like to do now, Garrett, put a strong hitter in the nine hole, kind of set the table for your people coming at the top of the order. Here, a chance to drive in a run. Gives him a chance to see a lot of Parker Hess first, as well as he smokes one down the third baseline. Like Wits had to kick the leg up to avoid it. Just foul. Drilled down that third base line. The 0 1 from Hess trying to get out of the inning unscathed. Two down here in the bottom of the second. Change up. Yep. Skied into shallow center field. Coming on is Griffin Bruns to make the catch. And the Flyers get out of the inning with a goose egg on the scoreboard. We played two. It's 1 1 here in the Division 4 District Semifinals on WOSN. Tonight's scoreboard brought to you by Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Lima, Wapak, Delphus, and St. Mary's. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken. Homestyle happens here. Do you have a list of how many times you have to read that, Garrett? Because we're here for a double header. Oh, boy. You know, it I started didn't think about five. that. And if I got to hear I that. Eat, I didn't eat before, before a game, so. I got to hear that Lee's thing very often between now and. 9, 30, 10 o'clock, whenever we're done today, it's going to be a long right, No, it's, the, it's going to put a hurting right. on them when I, when I get there. It's going to be, uh, I'll have the fryer still going because I will be, uh, it'll be uh, C right party at one and we are hungry. <laughs> <laughs> Ian Rimlin will lead off for the Marion local Flyers. 37 pitches, 23 for strikes for Magato. Curveball in. It's that one driven right to center field as Connor Schmeezing was standing in the perfect spot. It was drilled by Rinder, who got a look at Magado back in the second inning when Isaac Mulder was retired on the caught stealing. But drove it, drove it right back to center field where Schmeezing was camped under it from the get go. Pappelman steps back in the box as Magado steps off the Rubber. He thought about going from the stretch and that's going to go from the windup. Missed inside. Peppelman Scott out to second base his first time up in the first inning. 353 hitter. 13 RBIs. One home run on the season. That pitch in for a strike. Nice bounce back from Magado. Yeah, really good fastball on the inside part of the plate. Peppelman, one of the juniors for Marion Local. First team all Midwest Athletic Conference performer. That pitch finds the outside half of the plate for a strike as well. And after giving a rare first pitch ball, Magados battled back quickly to run the count to one, two. Curveball oh swing and miss. The first K retired or er, secured by Magado on the day. He really snapped that one off. It was a beauty of a pitch. Peppelman. A fine hitter in his own right. Didn't have much of a battle there. As Ethan Heitkamp comes back to bat. Two down. That pitch at the letters. Heitkamp reached on the second free pass that Magano issued back in the first. Swings and misses at the second offering. So after back-to-back -back first pitch balls, Magado battles back with a fastball to even account. That one driven right to third base. The chopper to Niemeyer makes the strong throw across the diamond to Ian Holman to retire the side in order for the first time here in the third inning. Flyers go down one, two, three in the third. And we'll go to the bottom half here on WOSN. Strikeout tonight brought to you by Homeless Insurance, your trusted local insurance specialist, members of the Wayne Insurance Group with two locations to serve you in Chickasaw and Versailles. Marion Local, the victim of their first strikeout in the top half of the third inning. Parker Hess has tallied three of his own all back in the first inning. As he'll get set to work here in the bottom of the third. And he will face 
the one, two, three hitters for Minster. As Dylan Heitkamp, the catcher, steps back of the box. 31 pitches, 22 of them for strikes through two innings. That one sky high in the air. Colton Arns camping under it at first base and makes the grab. As Heitkamp retired on just one pitch. Talked about that during the break, Garrett. Both pitchers would like to have an inning like the last one that uh, Nagato had, where you only have to throw a few pitches because both have been in the 30s through the first two innings. Yeah, Nagato with eight pitches back in the top half of this third inning. And Hess would like a similar situation. Curveball out of the zone. Tyler Stevie at the plate, one of the strikeout victims back in the first inning. 269 hitter. That one chopped high in the air. And uh, Isaac Bowler will make the catch at third base. Got it off the handle. And he ran that fastball right in on his hands. Popped him up weakly. And so quickly we talked about the yeah. <laughs> lack of pitches wanting to see here in the third. As Hess comes play. A hardy cut from Niemeyer on the first offering. Hess has done a nice job getting those first pitch strikes. The 0-1. Skied into right field. Peppelman going back, makes the catch. And a quick third inning from both sides. Going down in order for the first time this afternoon. We'll go to the fourth. Tied at one on the Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken Scoreboard here on WOSN. Top of the fourth inning about to get underway. Bryant Meyer, the number five hitter in the very local lineup, will lead off the fourth inning. Playing left field. Fouled out. The third base his first time up. Fouled one off the post down the third base side. Apparently that post made out of a wood block, I guess. It made, <laughs> made, like made, made quite, the, quite the sound there. The left-handed hitting Meyer. Oh, it's the 0-1 from Magado. Nice Good. bender in for a strike. Put that right on the inside corner under the fist. Not much you can do with just that. About not anything you can do with that pitch. Yep. That's the perfect placement there for Magado. The 0-2. That one changed the eye level of the hitter. Up and out of the zone. Runs the count to 1-2. Magado looking for his second. Holman's insurance strikeout of the day. 0-2. That one. Foul down the third base line one more time. That eight-pitch inning you mentioned a moment ago for Magato. Six of those pitches were strikes. He was coming into this inning, 45 pitches, 29 of them were for strike. The one-two. Foul right back to the screen. As Bryant Meyer starting to time up Magato just a little bit better. That swing he's got right now, if he makes contact, this could well go to the left fielder. The one, two. That one in the dirt. Evens account of two apiece to the leadoff hitter here in the top of the fourth. Wildcats got aboard via a couple of errors back in the first inning. Marion Local responded in the top half to even things up. Goose egg since. Is that one? Fought off back to the pitcher. Magano will make the throw to retire Brian Meyer. That's a nice piece of hitting even to it was. get the bat on it. Magado fields a position well. Talked about an eight pitch inning. That was just a seven pitch at bat. Number 15, Parker Hess. Hess looks to help his own cause. First team all Midwest out of the conference pitcher. Look out. Well, we talked in the pregame, Garrett. Magato has hit nine batters on the season. Yeah. He's not afraid to come inside. That one got away from him a little bit. See if he throws breaking ball away. The 1-0. Nope. That one off the handle. Tough spot. Hess down the line. Beat it out. 
that's a base hit for Parker Hess. Just the third base not collected by Marion Lobel. Ball got in on his fist. He got it over the pitcher's head. It just died in the grass before he could get to the second baseman. Schwederman tried to make a play on it, but too much speed from Hess. Yeah, we talked about Magado not being afraid to come inside. And, uh, and I think that's one of the you'll, you'll live with. If he's yep. going to barely put it over the pitcher's head, it's just one of those. You know what? Tip of the cap to him is the breaking ball in for a strike. That's just one well, you In the have old to days, with. Garrett, you know, when, when old people like me played, that would have broke his wooden bat. <laughs> that, that pitch right there on the handle. That one mixed up and out of the zone. I mean, no offense, Mark, but I don't know if old people like you got down the line as fast as Parker well, has to. <laughs> I know one that didn't. <laughs> <laughs> one ball, one strike to Isaac Mullenkamp. That one up and out of the zone. Mullenkamp DHing today. Out and out to second. His first plate appearance back in the first. Back in the second, I beg your pardon. Hess takes an extra step at first. Hit Set him. pitch. Yep. Got him. Class of 10 hit batsman of the year by Louis Magado. And just like that, runners on first and second. With one down here in the top of the fourth inning. Kramer had a double the last time and scored a run. He'd like to make that kind of contact again. Scored on a wild pitch. Back in the second inning. One down. It's that pitch out of the zone. Very local becoming a little more patient here in this fourth inning. Already thrown 14 pitches. Just has the single out recorded. That one spiked to catcher Dylan Heitkamp. A nice job staying in front of it. That certainly was. That ball goes to the screen, and they've got two runners in scoring position. Damon Kramer, the second baseman, as Mark said, had the double back in the second. And now Heitkamp and Mike Wiss want to have a conference on the mound with Magado. One down here in the top of the fourth inning. We are tied at one in this Division Four District Semifinal on the Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken Scoreboard. Minster, champions of the Midwest Athletic Conference with an 8 and 1 record. Share it with the Versailles Tigers, who, as we spoke earlier, like pretty much everybody in the MAC, still alive here in the yeah, OHSA State Baseball Tournament. They're in the Division Three tournament. So is Coldwater in D3. Of course, St. John's is left playing as well. So in the conference, of course, four teams here in this district. So uh, the teams are really playing well. In the MAC. Talked about Minster and Versailles. That's the fifth league championship for Minster. Versailles also has five league championships. Coldwater kind of has a run put together, Garrett. They've you had 33 could. league championships for the team whose field I'm playing at this particular point in time. And I, next year, is this a Division 7 baseball tournament game? <laughs> Eight, <laughs> nine. <laughs> I, yeah. The Division 7 state tournament game. I know there's a lot of conversation about it, and, and uh, my, my personal thought is I, I'm not in favor of that seven divisions, mm -hmm. but we should let the, the 800 schools vote on it, not, yep. not just nine members of the OHSAA uh, commission. So it is what it is. We'll live with it. Right now we're living with two runners on. Two balls, no strikes. Damon Kramer, two runners on. Infield playing in. First pitch swing and a miss. After the mound visit, just Kramer runs the count to 2-1 after the hard, hardy cut. Hess at second, Mullenkamp at first. Magno comes playward. That one just below the knees, runs the count to 3-1. He's walked three and hit one today, so not the best of control day for Magato. He'll come set it to belt. That one out of the zone as well. And after a base knock and a hit by pitch, three consecutive flyers aboard. After the walk drawn by Kramer. See if he chooses to go from the windup. Likewise, this might well be a squeeze situation. Griffin Bruns, number nine hitter in the order. Hits 182 on the season. Fine athlete gets down the line as well. 
Instead, we'll chop one yep. foul down the third base side. No sign of that. Instead, he had the third baseman in. That ball might have hopped over his yep. head if it stayed yep. fair. Bases loaded. Griffin Bruns. William Agano trying to bear down, get out of the inning. One down here at the top of the fourth. That one dribbled off the mound. One run will score. Another will come plateward. The throw up the line. Got safe. Slid under the tag. He did. It's a two-run single for Griffin Bruns. And the Flyers take a 3-1 lead on the lead famous recipe chicken scoreboard. Good wheels from Isaac Mullenkamp and an even better slide as he dove underneath the tag at the plate. Really nice. The throw was good. Good catcher. Heitkamp got it down, but just a really nice slide. And there's two RBIs at the end up now with runners on first and second. Those wild pitch and or the, uh, the hit batter and walk has really come to haunt. And now Isaac Muller, the top of the lineup, turns back over with still just one down. As Magado comes playward. Check swing. Did not go. Did not go as we'll finally check down the first base line. Our umpire today, David Tobin, behind the plate. Mark Steck Schulte down at first. And Jason Miller down the third base line up the middle. Roaming all over. Magno. Plateward. That one in for a strike. Yes. Muller showed bunt there. Still just one down. Third baseman playing on the grass in anticipation of a potential bunt. That one nearly got Isaac Moeller. Runs count to 2-1. Little bullpen activity from Minster right now. Have to get there. Yeah, Left-hander yeah, working. The eyes on that in a moment. See what number that is down there. That one up and out of the zone as well. Runs a count to 3-1. I broke my binoculars during hockey season, so I don't, I don't carry those with me anymore. So why would you need binoculars for hockey season? Well, uh, when I went to the eye doctor a few weeks ago, <laughs> it was the first time I had gone in five years, so the prescription probably needed a little update oh, there. <laughs> Three, one, in for a strike. Some places, if you get to the hockey arena, there's a place in the NHL you got to walk over top the scoreboard to get to the press box. That's a, so I'm a little closer than that in the college world, but the payoff pitch bounced it. And the Flyers have loaded the bases once again. That is the third drawn walk today for Isaac Moeller. Three of the four walks that have been given up. Bases loaded again. And here comes Coach Wiss. So that will do it. Or Louis Magado's run on the bump. And we'll get you all of the information on the pitcher coming in in a tough spot for the Wildcats when we return after this break of the action here on WOSN. Louis Magado remains on the hill. I guess I was always under the impression at the second mound visit that was that. Was that. But with the bases chucked and one down here at the top of the fourth, already two across from Marion Local, Magado stays on the bump. The first pitch swung down. Tough hop past the third base, but one run will score. Another comes plateward. The ball gets behind the left fielder. Ryland Edwards lost possession of the ball and went to come throw in it. And it's a two-run RBI single for Ian Rindler. Tough hop for the third baseman. Clearly a hit. Yeah. Got, got past the, the third baseman, but here comes Coach Wiss. Well, I'm not going <laughs> to yeah. I'm not going to go on record of what but it certainly appears as if that will be it for Louis Magado. Yeah. He on brought, the bump. A, brought a left-hander in from the bullpen. So Magado records one out here in the 4th inning. It's now a 5-1 lead for the Marion Local Flyers on the Lee's famous recipe chicken scoreboard after a 2 RBI single from Griffin Bruns and a 2 RBI single for Ian Rindler. Has busted this one open just a little bit here in the fourth. Let's see if we can get a that number 15. No, it's not 15, is it? Is it 
35, is it the designated hitter? 35 would be Schmidtmeyer. Alex Schmidtmeyer, maybe? I think that is a 3-5 out there. That's what I believe. Okay. Schmidtmeyer is 3-2 and two on the season. He's pitched 40 and two-thirds innings, 45 hits. CRA is uh, 3.10. He struck out 35 and walked 15. Yeah, by looking at Minster's roster, all the five, everybody that has a five of their number are already on the field. So Schmidt Meyer was D agent. Now will come in to try to clean up a little bit of a mess here. As Aiden Peppelman. The right fielder will step into the box, 0 for 2 on the day. And a lefty-on-lefty -lefty matchup. 72 pitches, 43 of them through strikes. With one out here in the fourth. Schmidtmeyer, first pitch in a bender for a strike. Big breaking ball that time. Second one stayed high. Just missed. Evens a count of one apiece. Hess goes 3.1 innings. Three to third innings. The 1 1. Bevelman gets the bunt down. Try to race. They go to third with the throw, and the bases are loaded one more time for the Flyers. Small ball. Good bunt in the grass. Called it a fielder's choice. Either way, the bases are loaded. There's still just one out into Heitkamp. Now, Ethan Heitkamp, 12 RBIs, three home runs to his credit. Still just one down here for the ninth hitter in this fourth inning. That one dribbled down the third baseline. He'll step on the bag. A nice play by Niemeyer across at Iman for the double play. A much needed defensive effort there from James Niemeyer retiring Ethan Eichen, but a big fourth inning for the Flyers. They lead 5-1 here on WOSN. High School Baseball tonight brought to you by Burke Petroleum, now offering propane for residential, farm, commercial, and industrial users. Burke Petroleum, dependable, available. 800-776-3097. Adam Rindler, a lead off the fourth inning for the Wildcats. Looking to get some base runners here in the fourth. Trailing 5-1 is Parker Hess. Throws the first pitch for a strike of the fourth inning. Hess looking to put another goose egg on the board after giving up a run back in the first. Just five pitches in inning number three, 36 total for the game. 26 of them for strikes. That pitch out of the zone. Evens a count at one apiece. This is an inning where Parker Hess wants to come out and throw a zero. You know, his, yes. his team just got a big lead. Let's shut him down and come back to the dugout again real quick. That one. In the left center field. Tracking back is Bryant Meyer to make the catch. For the first out of the fourth inning. That brings up Ian Holman. Playing first base today. One of four consecutive first-team all mid most athletic conference performers in the Minster batting order. Niemeyer, Rindler, Holman, Magado, all earning first-team honors. That breaking ball out of the zone. The final of three strikeouts in the opening inning for Parker Hess. Hess the 1-0. Swing and a miss on a nicely placed fastball. Even to count one apiece. Holman, check swing. Down the first base line will roll well, foul. That pitch was up and in. He was just trying to stay out of the way. Instead got bat on ball and went foul down the first base line. 286 hitter. Scored 20 runs this season, driven in 19. Number 25 in that right handed batter's box. A 1 2. Nope, we'll leave it off. 
stoppage in play as the third base umpire gets a stoppage. One, two, the count. One down here in the bottom of the fourth inning. Yes. Comes Blayward. Breaking ball. Got it. Got it. A beautiful home insurance strikeout. The first down looking for Minster today is that's the fourth Holman's insurance strikeout recorded by Parker Hess. What a beautiful pitch. Magado watches the first pitch in for a strike. I did not pay close enough attention uh, to where Magado is. I was just going to ask you that question. <laughs> <laughs> I was about to say he's the um, starting well, pitcher, but I don't know where he's playing now. That pitch inside, Magado has to get out of the way. We'll look between innings and see where number 19 goes. Because Schmittmeyer was say, the DH, and he's just going to stay in the game. In fact, he's in the on-deck circle. Two down here in the bottom of the fourth. Hess breaking Ooh. ball. That was a really nice breaking ball. He started to offer at it, but realized he was going to dive out of the zone. Nice pitch recognition by Magado there. That's a tough pitch to lay off. A 2-1 count here with two down. Hess fires one right to Colton Owens. He'll make the grab. And the Flyers put another goose egg on the scoreboard. They lead 5-1 to one after four complete here on WOSN. Tonight's Marion Local Premier Sponsor, OPEC in Osgood. For all your industrial painting, standing, and assembly needs, call OPEC. Flyers batted around in the top of the fourth inning. Played four runs, and just like the top of the fourth inning, Bryant Meyer will lead off for Marion Local. Facing Schwederman. The first pitch up and out of the zone. Schmidtman threw three pitches, got three strikes. Schmidtmeyer, I beg That's your pardon. Schmidtmeyer, excuse me. Oh, good That's breaking ball. Yeah. Beautiful bender. And Anthony's. Evens account at one apiece. Meyer, a 286 hitter on the year, awaits the 1 1. That one popped up. Goes out of play as Dylan Hyde can't pop right out of this crouch to chase after it. Runs a count to 1 2. Meyer 0 for 2 on the day. It's all four runs of the top of the fourth inning by Marion Local score, but one down. As Schmidt Meyer comes playward with the 1 2. Curve ball chopped down the first base side. Foul. The double play got him out of even bigger trouble. Oh, absolutely. That was a. Strong throw made by James Niemeyer down there at third base. Wherewithal to step on the bag and fire one down to first. It's a 1-2. That one to short. Dribbled to Tyler Stevie. He'll make the throw across the diamond in time to retire Bryant Meyer. That'll bring up Parker Hess. He got started last inning with that single. Just over the pitcher's head. Scored one of the four runs, the first of the four runs. Schmidtmeyer, the first offering to his counterpart, out of the zone. Took something off that breaking ball. Pass one for two on the day. Swing and a miss. That pitch just dropped out of the zone. Fell off the table as it came to Hess. The 1-1. One, one. Swing and a miss. Schmittmeyer finding a bit of a groove here. A left-hander not taking many time, much time between no. pitches. He's waiting for Hess to get back in the box so he can go. The pitch clock is not necessary. That out of the zone. He was counting two apiece here with one down. Top of the fifth inning. Minster got on the scoreboard first, back at the bottom of the first. Marion Local responded at the top half as Hess drives one. Down third base, tough play for Niemeyer. Hess is aboard one more time. Scored in the air. And that brings up Isaac Mullenkamp. 
So after mints, Mary Local even things up at one apiece in the second. We had a couple of straight goose eggs, and the Flyers busted it open in the fifth and fourth inning with four of their own. That's how we got to this 5-1 score. First pitch seen by Isaac Mullenkamp, cut on and missed. Hess was able to time up the breaking ball and drive it down to the third baseman where the error occurred. That one could be trouble. Drops between right and left field. Hess will make the turn for third. No throw. Runners on the corners with one down for the Flyers. Good piece of hitting that time. Reached out and just timed it and poked it out into the, the gap. That'll bring Kramer up. He had the big hit, one of the big hits. So he, he was walked, excuse me. He walked last inning. Came around to yeah. score. Came around to score. Got ahead of myself. Griffin he, Bruns had the big had, double. Uh, Kramer had a double back in the second yeah. inning. That uh, He's scored twice today for the Flyers. It's Alex Schmidtmeyer steps back on the bump. Runners on first and third with one down. Flyers want to put another crooked number on the scoreboard. That pitch on the outer half of the plate for a strike. Minster looking to put a goose egg up and get back the bats out. The 0-1. That one in a tough spot and will drop. As they'll come around to score. Hess will touch the plate to make it 6-1. Good situational hitting. Just reached out and slapped it over the second baseman's head where nobody could get it. He's two for two today. Scored two runs. Drove one in from the number eight spot in the batting order. Yeah, David Kramer was hitting 143 coming into today. Now, two for two. Two runs scored. And an RBI single. Still just one down. That pitch. Maybe a little inside. 1-0 awaiting Griffin Bruns. He'll turn to square. Runner going to third. And Schmidtmeyer will apply the tag after the throw from Heitkamp and retire Isaac Mullenkamp. So a nice throw and catch there from Heitkamp to Niemeyer to pick up the second out of the inning, an important one. Kramer's able to move up to second, but they knock off the lead guy and take one out of play. That one driven right to Stevie. He'll make the grab. And just like that, Minster gets out of the frame with only surrendering one run. We'll go to the bottom of the fifth. Flyers lead 6-1 on the Lee's famous recipe chicken scoreboard here on WOSN. <laughs> Strikeouts tonight brought to you by Holman's Insurance, your trusted local insurance specialist, member of the Wayne Insurance Group with two locations to serve in Chickasaw and Versailles. Bottom of the fifth inning, Mary Local with a 6-1 advantage over the Minster Wildcats as Alex Schmidtmeyer steps in. The pitcher started today as a designated hitter. All eight's the first offering from Parker Hess. Curveball in for a strike. Parker Hess has put down the last nine Wildcats in order. And he has. After giving up a run back in the first, he struck out four batters thus far, three of them coming back in that opening frame. That one bounced in, evens a count at one apiece. Through four innings, 47 pitches, 33 of them for strikes. And really, he had an eight-pitch inning and a five-pitch inning. I mean, he yeah. labored a little bit there in the first, but... That pitch right down the heart of the plate for a strike. So has to settle down after having a little bit of a laborious first. The one two. That pitch in the dirt. Schmidt fire or Schmidt Meyer was out with a sacrifice bunt back in uh, inning number two, and that began that run of nine consecutive batters to go down. Number seven hitter today for Minster. As Hess, the 2-2. That one in the dirt as well. He even runs the count full to 3-2. Did you get the feeling he tried to overthrow yeah. that one, Garrett? Looking for a punch yeah. out. The 3-2 to the leadoff hitter. You're on the bottom of the fifth. Fouled off. I got a bit of our home plate umpire. Schmidtmeyer 
Living to fight another day. Pitches the ball left-handed, bats right-handed. Yes, the three-two. Walked him, and Schmidt fires the ball. Just what the, the Wildcats need: get runners on base. That's the first walk today. Get the leadoff guy on. We're Rylan Edwards. As looks like we'll get a pinch runner for Schmidtmeyer. Can't see the number down there. It was zero. I say, I is, think. is it zero? I didn't Caleb Krakaus. Didn't know if I was losing my mind down there. It was just a single zero. Caleb Kaus goes down to first. It's Rylan Edwards, who has conceivably changed positions at some point, with Magado going to center field. Well, Mike just, Mike Wiss is making some substitutions here. He's doing some serious uh, communication here. And then you tell the... Uh, right, the home plate umpire, David Tobin, has to and tell Mitch Haynes, the Marion local bench boss, just what we're doing. Nonetheless, Rylan Edwards is at the plate. Nobody down here in the bottom of the fifth. Runner on first base. Hess comes set. Throws that one in the dirt. Bit of a foreign position now for Hess after retiring nine straight. Working... Out of the stretch. Kaus has a pair of stolen bases on the season. Whether you're down, you know, four runs or you whether you're gonna run them or not. That pitch by Edwards. Sky behind home plate. Even to count of one apiece. Nobody down. Third baseman play with his heels on the grass. In anticipation of a potential Rylan Edwards bunt. That one, chopped to short, has to step back on it. Makes the play at second, does Ian Riddler to retire. Kaus. Took a late hop on him. He made a nice play on the ball to get one run. We'll get the lead runner. It's a counter schmeezing. who was playing somewhere in the outfield. <laughs> Louis Magados playing right field, schmeezing. Listen here at center. Heitkamp makes another stop behind the plate. A couple of these pitches could have been wild pitches gone to the yeah. screen and put runners in scoring position. He's made a couple of nice plays. Runner at first base. Edwards takes his lead. Hess. Watches that pitch. Down the first base side, Arns makes a diving play, can't corral it. He can count a one apiece on a fine effort there by the first baseman, Colton Arns. One, one, the count. Six, one, the score on the Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken scoreboard. Flyers with the advantage here in the bottom of their fifth. Hess. Check the runner at first. Come playward. That one driven right back to the screen by Connor Schmeason. Number nine hitter for Minster. 0 for 1 on the day after flying out to center field in his first plate appearance back in the second. Schmeason awaiting the 1 2. That one up and in, out of the, able to get out of the way is Schmeezing. Evens a count of two apiece. Fastball got away from him, ran, wanted to run under the fist, and instead it got away from him to level the count at two. Still just one down here in the bottom of the fifth. Hess will throw over, not in time. Checking on Edwards. The 
2 2 from Hess. That one right back to the screen. Just off the top of the bat from Schmeezy. 351 hitter on the year. And we're getting a little action in the Marion local bullpen. I'll try to get a number here in just a moment. Hess comes set on the 2 2. Bounced it. Runs the count full. Here's the Wildcats trying to get some ducks on the pond here in the bottom of the fifth. It is Austin Niekamp has headed to the bullpen for the Flyers as we're in the fifth. Hess, the 3 2, Plagueward. That one driven into shallow center field. Coming up, Griffin Bruns to make the catch. And for the second time today, Connor Schmeezing retired on the F8. So two down, and the lineup will turn over. It's Drew Heitkamp, the leadoff hitter, catching today for Minster. How about the athleticism of your catcher, Garrett? When your catcher's got 20 stolen bases, yeah. tells you that you're a very active, athletic young man behind the plate. Two down. That one driven right to second base, takes a tough hop, and Edwin Heitkamp will be aboard. That's about as late of a yeah. hop as it can take on you. Yeah, as Damon Kramer got in front of the baseball, I thought it was going to be a routine play. Instead, where is it on the chest? And two runners are aboard. Well, they called it an error on the scoreboard. The ball was smoked. It was, it was a well-struck ball. Yes, Tyler Stevie watches the first pitch in for a strike. Stevie 0 for 2 on the day. Struck out in the first. Flew out to third. In the third. 6 1 the advantage for Mary Local. Two runners on it. Stevie swings and misses. At the second pitch. As Hess has a Holman's insurance strikeout on the mind. The 0 2, two down. That one fouled off the first base side. Oh, we got the top of the bus, Did we Mark. Get the top of we the got bus. the top yeah. of the bus. The Close. Parkway bus, not the Fort Recovery oh. bus. That's a shot because you got to hit it over the yeah, it's a, Fort Recovery bus. That's a that's a shot to do a, that. you got to muscle it up over the screen a little bit. The cover here on the first base side. Breaking ball out of the zone. Good high. It's a really good pitch. You know, you're up in the count like that and make him reach. Maybe get a bad swing. Late breaking pitch there from Parker Hess. Two down here in the bottom of the fifth. That pitch up and out of the zone as well. He evens a count at two apiece. The number two hitter. Awaits, chops down the third baseline. Lives to find another day on another deuce is wild. Two strike, two balls, two strikes, two outs. Number 22 in the batter's box. Well, after sailing through innings two, three, and four, this will be the 25th pitch of this inning. Runners on first and second as Parker Hess tries to get out. Fires a pitch just off the corner of the plate. A well-placed fastball. Wasn't good enough. Runs the count full to 3-2. Tyler Stevie, the number two hitter from Minster. 269 on the year. Awaits the full count pitch. Driven right down the third base line. Look out. Got a member of the Coldwater ground crew out there was ducking for his life. Of course, there's Eric Goodwin down there, one of the top ADs around. Great facilities and great organizer of not only their home events here, but also all the tournament events they yes, put sir. on at Coldwater. The payoff pitch. Two down. Runners on first and second. Tyler Stevie awaits the pitch from Parker Hess as Ethan Heitkamp awaits to receive behind a plate. Hess. That one up and out of the zone, and the bases are full of Wildcats after Stevie draws the walk. Yeah. 
mentioned the knee fires in the bullpen. A little bit of meeting on the mound here between pitcher catcher with Heitkamp going out to talk to Hess. Just the second free pass of the day issued by Hess. Both coming in this inning. As Ethan Heitkamp will go out and reassure his starting pitcher. Took 28 pitches in this inning, 75 altogether here into the fifth. James Neymar, one for two. Scored a run after singling back in the first as Hess comes plateward on the first pitch in for a strike. This is a huge at bat, Garrett. You know, you got the bases loaded with a four run lead, you got two outs. This is a huge at bat for both teams. Hess working out of the windup. That one's foul back to the screen. Runs a count to 0-2 on Niemeyer. Flew out to right field his last appearance. 18 RBIs on the season. Had a single in the opening inning. The 0-2. Missed in. Got him! Got him looking on the breaking ball for the Holman's insurance strikeout. Hess gets out of the inning unscathed. A bases loaded strikeout. Keeps the score 6-1 as we go to the top of the sixth here on WOSN. Top of the sixth inning. And Isaac Moeller, the leadoff hitter for Min for Marion Local, both here in the sixth and in the order, watches a first pitch strike from Alex Schmidtmeyer. Moeller, 0 for 0 on the day, has reached base three times on walks, and it's now down 0-2 on the count. It's a really nice breaking ball right there. Started off the plate. Moeller on the check swing, did not go. Wasn't far out of the zone. He was a, er, runs a count to 1-2. Yes. Dylan Heitkamp wanted that strike three called. So 1-2 pitch bounced, evens a count of two apiece. So after two strikes to the leadoff hitter, Moeller, evens a count of two apiece. Setting the plate, setting the table each time he's come to the plate. That one driven to right field directly at the right fielder. And Austin Nagato. Ritten. Oh. Right. To tell you the truth, I, um, I think. That's I Riddler. I was say, that I was, Riddler, it was Riddler, now. Riddler Yeah, it was Riddler <laughs> now. So that might have been the changes that Mike Wiss is a pitch in for a strike because the outfield has changed. Riddler <laughs> started in right field. That pitch missed. Magano. There's some triumvirate. If I'm a doctor, I think Edwards maybe is DHing now in exchange for Schmidtmeyer. Is that pitch swinging a miss in a Holman's insurance strikeout? Retired. Schmidt-Meyer's first strikeout. In fact, only the second time the Flyers have struck out today. Peppelman struck out back in the third inning. So putting the bat on the ball and making them play. Lefty-lefty matchup. Schmidt-Meyer missed out of the zone. So got two quick outs here after Moeller flied out to right field. Peppelman is the first batter that Schmidt-Meyer faced today. Swing and a miss and a pitch out of the zone. Even to count a one apiece. Peppelman 0 for 3. That one right back up the middle and gets his first base knock out of there. The first team all Midwest Athletic Conference performer aboard. As I've been marking in the fifth inning in my book instead of the sixth inning. I'm glad, I'm glad you said that because I thought I was the only one who did things well, like uh, that. Not a lot of brain power up here in the broadcast booth today, Mark. <laughs> You've got all of it. We'd have real jobs if we had brain power. 
That's true. Ethan Heitkamp is the throw over to Ian Ullman. Well, we talked about earlier the Marion local has stolen 93 bases on the season, 11 of them by Peppelman. But he's facing lefty on the mound here, and he hit him. So Heitkamp aboard for the, first, for the second time. The second flyer been hit by a pitch today. Nagato hit one. Hit Isaac Mullenkamp back in the fourth. It led to him coming around to score. Two down here, now two runners on. Wild Flyers looking to have a little bit of a two out rally. Here in the top of the sixth inning, leading 6 1 on the Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken scoreboard. Pitch out of the zone to Bryant Meyer. 0 for 3. Grounded out to short and first and to the pitcher and fouled out to the third baseman back in the first inning. Fouled that one off. Evens a count, one apiece. Peppelman was able to get a hit by going up the middle with lefty on lefty. Let's see what Meyer can do here. His 286 average. Peppelman takes the lead at second. Change up, driven to second. Easy pitch and catch from Noah Schmiedemann to Tyler Stevie will retire the Flyers. They can't put a run on the board, and we will go to the bottom of the sixth. Wildcats looking to cut into the lead here on WOSN. High School Baseball tonight brought to you by Burt Petroleum, now offering propane for residential, farm, commercial, and industrial users. Burt Petroleum, dependable, available, 800-776-3097. Bottom of the sixth inning, Minster trailing Marion Local 6-1. I'm Garrett C. Wright, joined alongside Mark Schein for all the action here. In this Division Four District Semifinal at Coldwater. Winner will advance to play the winner of Parkway and Fort Recovery in the nightcap here at Coldwater. Our game will be Friday at 6 p.m. 18 strikes out of 30 pitches back in inning number five. 51 strikes and 77 pitches as he starts him off with a ball. Parker Hess back on the bump. Five Holman's insurance strikeouts, including a bases loaded backwards K to end the bottom of the fifth as Hess misses on back to back pitches, runs the count to 2 0 to Adam Rindler, the cleanup hitter for Minster, 440. Batting average, one for two thus far. That pitch misses as well as Rindler. His 80th pitch, but of course, Garrett, the unwritten rule in the major leagues is you throw 100 pitches, yeah. you got to come out. That, that's major league unwritten rule now, apparently. As Hess comes plateward, that one in for the strike. Of course, Mary Local hasn't invested $100 million in Parker uh, Hess, so. The 300 pitch Nolan Ryan days are over, my man. <laughs> that one in for a strike as well. Bottom of the zone, good pitch, but also, you know, here we've we got a hitter just trying to get himself on base. Riddler says, we need base runners. I'm going to take to make you throw a strike. He's thrown two. The payoff pitch. Foul back to the screen. We talk about pitch counts. Back when I was in high school, I can remember a, I don't remember if it was a sectional or a district, but Nick Johnson from Delphi St. John's mm -hmm. threw 149 pitches in a tournament game. And, uh, that's a lot. Payoff pitch, stung. Into left field, tracking back is Brian Meyer to make the grab. And Riddler's retired with the F7 for the second consecutive at bat. That'll bring up Ian Holman. 0 for 2 on the day with a pair of strikeouts from Parker Hess. One swing and one looking. That's Holman hitting 286 all a year. The first baseman, one home run, 19 RBIs on the season. That pitch. Getting in on him. Hess leaping off the mound. Runs out of room to make a play. Now, Garrett, sometimes as announcers, we get asked, what was the best game you called? I called a baseball game here. It was district championship game in 2021. St. Henry Lincoln and uh, Lincoln View. 11 innings, 1-0 oh, Lincoln so one View. One nothing game, right? What made me think about the St. Henry catcher dove for a ball like that right there. He hit his face on the screen, had to have a bandage put on it, and, of course, stayed in the game. The 0-1 popped up. 
It was one to nothing, 11 innings, and I got home and my son-in-law said, oh, boring game, huh? <laughs> nope. You are wrong. It was the best high school game. Not, obviously, not many runs on the on the board, just one to nothing, but the base running and the outfield play, and it was an incredible game. Two very good teams back then. Oh, yeah, that's that pitch, skied one more time. Arns giving way to the second baseman. Kramer will make the grab for the second out. I like that communication because the second baseman, Kramer, has got a better look at it the way the sun is. You know, Arnswood would have had to be looking up into the sun. Instead, Kramer's get a sideways look at it and able to play the ball a little easier. Magato. Get a box. Fouls that one back. The gold... Kia Van having a rough day back down behind the, behind the first base dugout here. The 0-1. Magado. Fouls that one off. Good breaking ball that time. Magado one for two. Had a single back in the second inning. Stranded at third base, however. Let's see if Hess wastes one here. Let's see if we get him chase one. Hess with five. Holman's insurance strikeouts on the day. Looking for number six with two down here on the bottom of the sixth. That one dribbled to second. Kramer will make the throw over to Arns to retire the Wildcats in order in the bottom of the sixth. We'll go to the top half of the seventh. Marion Local with a 6-1 lead on the league's famous rest of bean chicken scoreboard here on WOSN. Scoreboard brought to you by Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Lima, Wapak, Delmas, and St. Mary's. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, home style, happens here. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken scoreboard reads 6-1. Mary Local with the advantage here in the top of the seventh. Potentially last chance for the Flyers. As Parker Hess looks to help his own cause. Although, might not be coming out for the seventh inning to pitch. Nonetheless... Well, he has thrown uh, 90 pitches today, so. Yes. Alex Schmidtmeyer's first offering to Hess. Missed out of the zone. Hess scored two runs today. That one driven into the gap in right center field and could roll for a little bit. Hess, at least with a stand-up double, could be looking for three. He'll now chug around. It might be a stand-up triple, the double cutoff. Parker has the lead off triple. Wow. Smoke that ball to the right center field wall. A second hit of the day. He scored two runs. Garrett, he's in position to score a third. That's his second hit of the day. Pitched very, very well. Three hitters so far. Alex Schmidtmeyer comes playward. That one dribbled. Hess will come playward. He'll now get in a pickle as High Camp, as Hess retreats back to home plate, will slide in. The ball's dropped. He scores. Wow. And a runner goes to second. Make it 7 1. Flyers on the Lee's famous recipe chicken scoreboard. Schmidtmeyer had a chance to make the play at the plate and was unable to. He tried to make the tag before the ball got to him. Kind of the typical, you know, you think of a, a wide receiver who looks up before, you know, he may catches the football, starts running with it. 7 1 the advantage now, nobody down. There's a pitch in for a strike. As Damon Kramer, the second baseman, comes back to the plate. Kramer. Double back in the second, scored the first run for Marion Local. Also had a single, an RBI single back in the fifth. Scored a run back in the fourth after walking as well. So an active day on the base pass for Damon Kramer. As he slams one down the first baseline, and that will tail foul. Parker Hess, young man, go set in the dugout. Hydrate yourself because you're coming back for the seventh. Go close this one out. Schmidtmeyer. You know, Garrett, as you look at this, the top five 
people in the Marion local uh, batting order have not scored today. All seven yeah. runs are coming at the bottom four players in the batting order. Yeah. Runner on second. It's that one. Smoked. And tracking backwards is somebody for the Marion local <laughs> left fielder. Lost track of who's in left field. I think it might be. Well, I think it's Meyer. I would say. He's it? a left-handed player, and he, he has started in left field. I'm going to say it's Meyer. Excuse me. Rylan Edwards. Rylan Edwards. Yeah. Looked at the wrong left-handed player. So one down. Is that pitch from Schmidt Meyer in for a strike to Griffin Bruns. Bruns two for three on the day with a pair of singles. Start of the day two for two before fly out to shortstop as Schmidt Meyer missed up and out of the zone. Evens count one apiece. Taking the lead at second base. Schmidt Meyer. Swing and a miss as Bruns fooled on the offering. Really defensive swing as that breaking ball got under his fist. The one two. Mullenkamp takes the lead. Schmidt Meyer plateward. He'll lay the butt down. Schmidt Meyer at third. What a and play. they'll retire him at first. That throw from Niemeyer. James Niemeyer, wow. stronger than a garlic milkshake. Got him in time. My goodness. I thought that was a hit for sure. I yes, thought he'd sir. put that ball perfect spot in the grass, and he's going to beat it out. He bunted it with a two-strike count. That alone fooled the third baseman, but what a play by Niemeyer. That pitch from Schmidtmeyer in for a strike. <laughs> Top of the seventh inning, a 7-1 lead for Marion Local. Minster got on the scoreboard first in the bottom of the first. Flyers respond in the top of the second. Nobody scored in the third. Four in the fourth for Marion Local. One in the fifth, one in the seventh here to get to that 7-1 advantage. Schmidtmeyer missed out of the zone one more time, 2-1. Played by Heitkamp to keep the ball going to the screen, letting another run in. Two down. Isaac Molenkamp, the designated hitter, standing on third base. It's Isaac Moeller watches that pitch out of the zone for a 3-1 count. Moeller has walked three times today. On the verge of potentially doing it a fourth. Should Schmidtmeyer miss the zone one more time? The 3-1. And for the fourth time today, Muller's aboard via the walk. The team has given up five walks today, and he's got four of them. Talk about play discipline. We talked about his batting average at 200. What's he doing in the leadoff spot? He's been on four times. Yeah. That's what he's doing in the leadoff spot. And that brings up Ian Rindler. Runners on the corners. We'll see if Muller takes off for second base here. Pitch out of the zone. Five consecutive balls have thrown since he had an 0-2 count or an 0-1 count. Ian Holman holding the runner on at first. As Moeller doesn't go. Pitch missed out of the zone. 2-0 count. Runners on the corners, two down. Here in the top of the seventh inning. It's a 7-1 game. Or the Marion local flyers on the least famous recipe chicken scoreboard. That pitch skied high in the air. Right at the second base bag. Tyler Steve will make the grab to end the top half of the seventh. Last chance for the Wildcats when we return. They trail 7 1 here on WOSN. Tonight's Marion local premier sponsor is OPAC in Osgood for all your industrial painting, standing and assembly needs. Call OPAC. Bottom of the seventh inning. Minster trailing 7-1. The top seed here in this Division IV district at Coldwater. Wildcats looking for their first hit since the second inning. As Parker S. Settled down after the first. Wailing and dealing with five strikeouts so far today. First pitch in for a strike. To Alex Schmidtmeyer, his counterpart now after starting the day as a designated hitter. That one run he's given up in the first inning was unearned as well. Remember, he had a 1.03 earned run average coming into the day. Schmidtmeyer fouls it back. 
He let a sack bunt down to the second, walked in the fifth. Was retired on the fielder's choice. Pretty good to have a 1.03 earned run average, and you could lower it today. Nearly got Schmidtmeyer. On the flip side, it's a tough thing to be have a an ERA that low and be five and, and three, five and three, five and three in the, yeah. all the season. Looking at six and three if they can get three outs here. Hess, breaking ball just missed. Evens a count of two apiece. That, that might be the sharpest breaking ball he has thrown yep. today. That really had, had some bite to it. Hess the 2-2 two -two to Schmidtmeyer. Dribble down the first base side. Arns can't range to get the play. And the first hit since the second inning for the Minster Wildcats is aboard on the leadoff single for Alex Schmidtmeyer. That's what the Wildcats need, base runners. And it looks like Schmidtmeyer's day is going to be done as he'll be pinch ran for the second time. Unless this is number four making that move right there, Garrett. And that is Reese Bear. That brings up Rylan Edwards. 286 hitter. 0 for 2 on the day. Grounded a second, grounded a short. See what Bear does at first base. Takes a pretty big lead. That pitch out of the zone. Or in the zone for a strike on the outer half of the plate. Approaching the two hour mark here. In this division for district semifinal as Edwards awaits the 0-1. Popped up directly behind the screen. Ball got loose in the bullpen down there. Yeah, Niemeyer's throwing again. Say, he camp down there. there. Yeah. Number Staying 20. loose just in case. Is Hess. Come set. Runner at first. 0 2 count. That one skied into left field. Shallow left field. And the third baseman, Isaac Moeller, will squeeze it for the first out. A little extra excitement from the Flyer faithful here for just a moment as they can feel a potential spot in the district finals. Connor Schmiesing. Skied to center twice today. Very local beat Minster 3-2 to two a year ago in the sectional final. Getting all the way to the district final before losing to St. Henry. Pop up, giving Chase his high camp. Out of play. No one count. Half of the foul pitch. Schmiesing. Hitting 351 on the season. Nice. Hit a couple of well-struck balls straight to center field today. As Hess tries to complete what he started. Pitch dribbled down the first baseline on a bunch. Schmiesing. Dribbled it foul, however, as Heitkamp watched it die in the grass down the first baseline. Good job to hop on it in case it hits a rock or something, kicks back onto the field. There's been a couple of hops yeah, today. That's correct. Sometimes you get a little overspin on it or it kicks it sideways. The 0-2 count to Schmazing. One down here in the bottom of the seventh inning. Mary Local trying to close the book on Minster. Wildcats trying to keep it alive, trailing by 7-1 score on the least famous recipe chicken scoreboard. Hess. That one in the right field. Pebbleman ranging back, makes the grab for the second out. And that turns the lineup over. Dylan Heitkamp is the Marion local faithful rise yeah. to their feet with two down here in the bottom of their seventh. They realize what's at stake here. That ball was struck pretty well, but it kind of bended back towards Pebbleman in the outfield and made the play on it. Heitkamp. Reached on an error back in the fifth. That's Hess. Comes plate where throw down to first. Schmidtmeyer. I beg your pardon, Bear dives back in. 
pinch running for Schmidt Meyer. That pitch missed for a ball, by the way, so it's a 1 0 count. First batter this inning that didn't get a first pitch strike. Hess, Plateward, in for a strike. He evens a count at one apiece. He'll check the runner as Bear will take his lead. That pitch hits Dylan High Camp. I think that's the first hit batsman today by Parker Hess. It is. Ball rolled in, rode in on him. Puts a couple of runners on. I can't. In a bit of a tough spot there after wearing one on the legs. Has had uh, quite the season on the base paths. So runners on first and second. For the number two hitter, Tyler Stevie. Shortstop. Over for two of it. Eight. Walked back in the fifth to load the bases before Hess got that pivotal strikeout looking to get out of the jam. As Stevie watches that pitch in the dirt. Got to start to wonder how much more is left in the tank for Parker Hess. I have him at pitch 105. Of course, that's the official count. <laughs> well, no, I would not say that. <laughs> it's in the ballpark. How's that? Bears just there. slinging a miss. Yeah, Even to pitch. count at one apiece. Stevie, 15 RBIs on the season. A 1 1. Has missed inside. That's the same pitch that hit the previous batter. It rides inside under the fist. That one was not, did not make contact with the batter, but same type of pitch. Runners on first and second take their lead. That pitch in for a strike. Even to count a two apiece. And the Wildcats are down to their last strike, trailing 7 1. Stevie struck out back in the first, trying to avoid it here. Hess would love a Holman's insurance K. Swing and a miss. Got it. Marion Lobo will go to the district final after. Parker Hess tallies his sixth strikeout of the day. The Holman's Insurance K ends the frame. And Marion Local grabs a 7-1 win on the least famous recipe chicken scoreboard here in the district semifinals. I think, Garrett, there, there are three keys to the game. Key number one is how well Hess pitched today. You mentioned the six strikeouts, two walk. He did hit a batter today. He threw... 109 pitches, 77 of them for strikes for his sixth win of the season. The biggest strikeout, I think, was key number two, is the one where he got Niemeyer looking in the yeah. fifth with the bases loaded. That, those two plays were outstanding. But then offensively for Marion Local today, they get seven runs from Parker Hess, Isaac Mullenkamp, Damon Kramer, and Griffin Bruns. Those guys were hitting 176, 224, 143, and 182 coming in today, and they put seven runs on the board for their team today. Yeah, that's an impressive, impressive stat from the bottom four there. Parker Hess doesn't allow a hit in the third, fourth, fifth, or sixth innings. Gives up one in the second, one in the seventh, and two in the first. Otherwise, unscathed today, six. Home and insurance strikeouts on the day for Parker Hess, who moves to six and three on the season on the bump. And the number four seed of Marion Local Flyers will find themselves in the district finals against either the Parkway Panthers or the Fort Recovery Indians who will play in the nightcap here at Coldwater. An impressive performance from the Flyers. The final score, the final time on the Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken Scoreboard. Mary Local defeats Minster 7-1. to one. For Mark Shot and Garrett Seawright and our entire WOSN crew, we'll catch you next time here on WOSN.